What I want to talk about today is photographing with a wide angle lens, a really wide angle lens, something between the range of 14 and 24 millimeter. And when you're using a wide angle lens, there's three topics we're going to discuss. Number one is depth of field. Number two is distortion and how objects appear to change shape as they get closer to the lens. And number three, which is the most exciting and most important topic in probably all of photography, and that is composition. So one of the challenges in photographing with a really wide angle lens is filling the frame for the composition. Well, one of the helpful hints is to get really close to the subject, something interesting like, for example, these flowers. So when you're this close to a subject within two feet, you have to make a decision. Do you want a really shallow depth of field at f2.8, for example, or do you want to stop all the way down to 16 or 22 and get everything in focus from the flowers all the way out to the horizon? If you choose you want everything in focus at f22, you have to consider your hyperfocal distance. So imagine f2.8 with a very shallow depth of field. Well, if, as you increase the aperture to 22, you now have this great range, but you want to adjust it slightly so that everything from the closest point to the horizon or infinity is in focus. There are things like charts where you can be absolutely precise given the right focal length versus the right depth of field or aperture that you choose. But typically what happens in the field is that I go into manual focus, I focus on the closest subject to the camera, and then I focus away towards infinity just a little bit. All right, so another thing to consider when using a wide angle lens is distortion. And when you have a vertical like this tree, as you tilt the camera back, that tree is gonna distort. That can work for you or against you. It's a compositional element that you have to consider. So, so far in this video, we've been talking about several different aspects of how to use a wide angle lens, but we've saved the best for last, so that's composition. So we came to a place, the vortex of all compositions, and that is Weston's Beach at Point Lobos in California. This is where some of these beautiful patterns of boulders have been taken in black and white. So we hope that this place inspires us so that you're inspired by what we say to go out and make some great compositions. Absolutely. So. One of the things that Mark and I talk about quite often is during the workshops, we see a handful of very common mistakes and they're mistakes that even I catch myself doing. And one what's, of them, what's the most important one, Dave? The most, see all the, time. the most important one. And we see it all the time, especially when people are working with wide angle lenses is putting the horizon line dead center, right in the middle. We've, you know, we're, it's the first thing you learn not to do with a camera, but it's amazing that you get out to a great location and you're seeing, you know, beautiful light, gorgeous scene, and you're just click. And then you look at your pictures that evening and the horizon line's dead center. Not only that, but you've set the tripod up so it's eye level. Yeah. So it's eye level, no foreground, you're not close to anything, and the horizon's in the middle. Right. It happens all the time. What's the other thing that always happens during the critiques? We probably notice it more during the critiques yep. than out shooting. We see distracting elements in the corner of the frames. Right. People, again, you're so focused on what's going on in the beautiful light that you don't see that just, you know, the dead tree branch sticking in the side or coming in the frame. It's just talking it, about things coming in the frame. Uh, I always see in, during critiques are strange or unwanted tangencies. Yep. Those are thing, locations in the picture where two things line up and that actually brings attention to that spot, whether people know it or not. And I see that oftentimes and right. people don't even know that that's a tangency or that Absolutely. it brings attention to that spot. Yeah, and it takes away from the, the picture and oftentimes just moving the camera, simply a foot left or a right or a matter of inches up or down can solve that issue. So be really, really careful about things overlapping that you don't want. Well, yeah. and, and be mindful that you can only, you can move the camera just an inch sometimes. Absolutely. Even with a wide angle lens at a foot or two away from a subject, you can move it half an inch and it'll make a big difference. Yeah, that's true. So there are a couple things that Mark and I like to tell people to do to improve their composition. The, the best one, which I, I learned early on and I have not forgotten in any picture I've ever taken, <laughs> sure. is how to utilize, I think it's the most helpful to me actually, is how to utilize the negative space. Right. And this could be anything from a big sky to a dark shadow in the foreground right. to, you know, highlights uh, that create uh, specular highlights in a pattern or something, but yep. basically a big area of the picture that is not the subject. Right, and that's, that's huge. That can really make or break a picture. Uh, the other thing that I like to do is take 
the composition and give depth to it. And that can be done sometimes just mm -hmm. by the lighting, the way the lighting's coming down through uh, clouds or something. That's huge. The other thing you can do is try to create a foreground, middle ground, and background. We've seen this done for centuries by the great painters. And the same thing can be That's done right. in a photograph. Whatsoever. Absolutely. And again, you can, certain parts of photography you think are just math. If I just do mm -hmm. this and I do that, I'll get a great picture. You know, sky one third, this, that, and the other thing. It doesn't always work that way. I mean, that's where you have to... What? <laughs> it doesn't, I'm sorry. You just can't do the, you know, one side of the brain and expect it to work. And that's where the whole creative aspect comes and breaking the rule sometimes. That's where you have to use the analytical side of your brain to figure out the exposure, right? Um, how the tripod works, sure, and read the manual. <laughs> and then after you do all that, <laughs> the rest as far as composing is perceptual. That's right. Because one of the one of the very interesting aspects of composition is that I think the best way to learn how to compose would be to learn how to draw or paint. Because when you draw something, like a human face. I'll bet 99% of the people put the eyeballs in the upper third. Right. But they're actually right in the middle of the head. That's right. Especially when you got a big old forehead <laughs> or a big old chin. There you go. <laughs> but no, you're absolutely right. Taking uh, the ability to learn to draw on a piece of paper and lo learning you know, patterns and shapes and what creates the eye to go around that frame is yep. huge. And that will make, you know, try to take that and put it into finding a picture by walking around, you know, especially with a wide angle again, because that's, that's the tough lens to use. We can all put on a telephoto and start isolating things. But when you have that wide lens and you're trying to just get it all, people oftentimes get in trouble. You have to fill the frame. You got to fill the frame with important and interesting information. Just like your belly. <laughs> there you, <laughs> you go. You want to eat some good food. What do you do? You, you gotta fill good food. You gotta fill that frame.